हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर सीमा कोकितकर फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायोटेक्नोलॉजी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट प्रिसिपिटेशन रिएक्शंस दिस प्रिसिपिटेशन रिएक्शंस आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रिएक्शंस इन मेडिकल बायोटेक्नोलॉजी इन मेडिकल माइक्रोबायोलॉजी एंड क्लिनिकल इम्यूनोलॉजी दे आर ऑफ ग्रेट सिग्निफिकेंस इन द क्लिनिकल साइंसिस नाउ वी विल सी वॉट आर दिस प्रिसिपिटेशन रिएक्शंस Precipitation reactions they are basically based upon the antigen antibody interactions now how this precipitation reactions basically occurs when a soluble antigen it reacts with antibody in the presence of the optimum conditions of the temperature and ph there is a formation of the antigen antibody complex and this antigen antibody complex is insoluble so you can just see here students you can just see here that when the soluble antigen and soluble antigen antibody they react with each other we will be getting a precipitation so now what are the basic requirements for a precipitation reaction to occur an antigen antibody concentration is a very crucial factor when we talk about the precipitation you can see this in graph if you will see this graph students you can see that there are three zones you can see you can see here there is a zone there is a zone that we called as a zone of antibody axis here is a zone that we called as a zone of the antigen axis and in between students you can see a zone that is the zone of the equimolar concentration you may observe here that our peak of the graph falls here that is we can see that the maximum precipitation is observed in this particular zone so that it indicates that we need a equimolar concentration of the antigen and antibody for our reaction now there are the different types of precipitation reactions students you can perform the precipitation reactions in solution you can do this precipitation reactions in the agar and even you can perform them using the electric field now i will be only focusing on one type of the precipitation reactions those happens in agar now students again these reactions may be of four types single diffusion in one dimension we call this as a ordinance procedure double diffusion in one dimension we call this as a okle fulthrop method single diffusion in two dimension which is popularly known as the radial immunodiffusion or mancini method and the double diffusion in two dimension that we popularly call as octaloni's method students if you see these two first methods they are not used in the laboratory nowadays so i will be mainly focusing in last two reactions or uh, that is last two methods that is radial immunodiffusion and the double diffusion now we will be talking about the single diffusion in the two dimension that we called as a mancini method why do we call this technique as a single diffusion because out of our antigen and antibody either antigen or antibody moves and because the movement is in the radial direction we call it as a two dimension now how we are going to perform it we are going to take a plate which contains the agar with the antibody we are going to cut a well where we are going to place our antigen and as the antigen diffuses around we will be able to see the formation of a precipitation ring students you can just see here that we are able to we are able to see the different dimension of our rings and this dimension indicates that there is a different concentrations of the antigen you can also see here that in center we are just loading the antigen and this antigen diffuses so that you will be able to see this precipitation line now how can we estimate the antigens in this laboratory so the diameter of ring is proportional to the antigen concentration we can plot a standard graph using the known concentration of the antigens and by using this we can extrapolate the diameter of our unknown antigen to know the concentration applications are the technique is used to quantify the antigens and antibodies 
Now the second method is called as a double diffusion method that is Octoloni's method. A student we call this method as a double diffusion method because both antigen and antibody that diffuses and because they meet in the equimolar concentration we will be able to see a precipitation line here. Now see students. I will be explaining here that how this test can be used to see the identity of the two antigens. Now I will say that there is antigen 1 and antigen 2 and these two antigens they react with the antibody. Now what will happen there is the formation of the different types of lines. Now suppose if you are getting a line like this we say that it is an arc. It is an arc. If the arc is formed, it says that it is line of identity. Now, suppose if we are getting a line like this, it says that it is this puff. It is our antigen 1, 2 and this is our antibody. If this spur formation is there, we say it is line of partial identity. And line of non-identity gives us a cross line. So, if it is our antigen 1, it is antigen 2 and this is our antibody. If we are getting a cross line that says it is a line of the non-identity so that we can identify whether our two antigens, they are identical, our two antigens, they are partially identical or our two antigens are non-identical. I hope you understood my lecture well. So, thank you so much for uh, attending my lecture. Thank you so much.